Hey guys, I'm Combat Craig, and this is the secret to increasing your VA disability payments by 30% or more. If you want to get paid the highest possible VA rating, then you need to focus on high value claims. High value claims are defined as claims that pay 30% or higher. There's a couple reasons why 30% VA disability ratings are considered high value ratings and high value claims. The main thing is you can add dependents. So if you're at zero, 10, or 20%, you can't claim your dependents. At 30%, you can claim dependents. Also at 30%, we're looking at $508.08 per month tax-free. If you have a spouse added on there, you can bump it up to $568.05. And then here's the kicker, and this is where you get a double dip. If your spouse is also a veteran, you could claim each other. So we're talking about $568.05 times two. That's eleven thirty-six ten. Just by you and your spouse that are both veterans getting up to 30% and claiming each other. If you have kids, you get to add on more. So dependent pay doesn't work when you're at zero, 10, or 20%. 30% high value claims. That's where we're at. Also, a lot of these are gonna be secondary claims. So you want to educate yourself about the VA claims process. One place you could do that is in my boot camp. Check it out, links in the description, combatcraig.com. And you want to make sure you understand how you're going about establishing service connection. Direct, secondary, pre-existing, presumptive, 1151 claims. That's the first part, and then you need to prove it. Diagnosis, symptoms, nexus. If you need medical evidence and your doctor won't give it to you, check out my med team. Link for my med team is also in the description. Some of these things you may have, that's why I'm showing them to you. Um, and, you know, these are examples of other people's claims. We're going to do, do about 10 of them here. So I'm just going to kind of, you know, show you what I would do. So a lot of increases and then even more secondaries. So let's hop into it. All right, here's our first one. We have PTSD at 50%, service connected, that's good. Traumatic brain injuries deferred. Deferred means that they haven't made a decision on your claim yet. So it's not good or bad. I mean, it would be better if they made a decision, but that decision could be a denial. So it's not good or bad. If you have things that are marked deferred like this, stay positive, wait for your decision letter. Once you get your decision letter, that's when you could do something. Right knee strain 10, tube dysfunction deferred, allergic rhinitis is zero. We're gonna probably look at increasing this depending on your symptoms. It all comes down to your symptoms. So 0% is low, 10 or 30 is better. Probably, we're probably gonna increase that. If you look at this little arrow here underneath allergic rhinitis for gastroesophageal reflux disease, 30%. GERD. So this is a secondary to allergic rhinitis. So I often talk about, you know, like filing secondary. So if you have anything service connected, even at 0%, even if it's allergic rhinitis at 0% that needs to go higher, you can still file secondaries on top of that. This is a good example of how to use secondaries to keep the ball moving, keep those 30% ratings coming. So we have GERD, Secondary to allergic rhinitis, 30%, sweet. Obstructive sleep apnea, secondary to allergic rhinitis at 50%. Just look at that. That's that's a 0% rating, and there's a 30 and a 50 stacked right on top of that zero. So you could increase that zero, but didn't come out of it too bad. You still pulled out 80% from it, so, you know. Didn't do too shabby. We have left hip at 10, bilateral tinnitus at 10. So then we have a bunch of 10% ratings. You can file additional secondaries onto those if you have them. And this all comes down to what do you have? Not what do you think you have, that's where it starts, but what does your doctor say you have? And then how is he connecting it, writing the nexus? How is he establishing the link? This would be a secondary service connection claim. But so far, we're doing pretty good here. And um, yeah, 50% for uh, PTSD, mental health, and then um, zero for allergic rhinitis, not so good. Maybe an increase, but still 30 and 50 secondaries on top of that. 
Moving on, we have uh, another example of secondaries here. So we have a lumbar disc herniation, L5-S1. So this is a back condition, right? 20%. That's a good, solid back rating. And then secondary. So we have radiculopathy in the right lower extremity and the right leg. You ever get that in the right leg down here? Your lower back? I have it, so I'm familiar with it. It just shoots right down through your ass cheek and your thigh and into your ankle, maybe even down into your foot. That's, that's what radiculopathy is. So we got 10% for radiculopathy and then zero for the scar. So there was some surgery here. 0%, that's pretty much what scars come down to. And then 10% um, radiculopathy in the left lower. So not bad. Start off with 20% and then file two secondaries for radiculopathy, you know, 20, 30, 40%. That radiculopathy might be low. You might be able to increase those. The scar, you're probably good at 0%. They usually don't pay too much. I have a scar right here. I had a neck surgery, anterior discectomy. I mean, you can't even see it. It's somewhere here. So they're, they're not going to pay for scars they can't see. If you have big scars, that's a different story. But little scars, I wouldn't even bother filing it, you know, unless you need to establish service connection for something, which is clearly not the case here. We have TMJ at 10%, degenerative arthritis in the cervical spine. 20%. And then we have radiculopathy in the upper left shoulder at 20%. So here's another example of good secondaries, 20 plus 20. So you could have different ratings in your neck and your spine too without pyramiding issues, but you have to pull them apart. So we started off with a 10 on the uh, lumbar spine, the lower part of your spine, put radiculopathy on the left and the right leg. Also, there's a bilateral factor involved here. That's probably about five points. And then uh, we have the neck at 20 and then radiculopathy in the upper left shoulder up here somewhere, right, for 20%. So another good example. What do you have? What can you get a diagnosis for? And what can you get your doctor to write you a nexus for. If your doctor won't write it, hit up my med team, links in the description. All right, this one's a overall 90% rating. Migraines, including migraine variants, 30%. They're called migraines, diagnostic code 8100, all headaches. There's about 150 of them. So whatever you write down, whatever you prove, it can look like this, you know, migraines, including migraine variants. Maybe the variants are tension headaches or some other kind of headaches. 30%, not bad. We have unspecified anxiety disorder. I had this one, 50%, 50% mental health rating. Not bad. Obstructive sleep apnea, 50%. CPAP machine, right? Diagnosis, symptoms are covered. In the sleep study, the nexus is the most important part. This veteran got over the hurdle, 50%. And then there's a bunch of uh, TENS, tinnitus, GERD, osteoarthritis, carpal tunnel. Most of that stuff, orthopedic conditions are uh, 10%. Um, if we're going to go back and look at all this as a whole, um, what can be increased and then what additional secondaries. Actually, there are no secondaries here. So just kind of off the top of my head, that mental health rating can be increased. You don't need to add in more diagnosis of more mental health disorders. Just stick with your unspecified anxiety disorder. Maybe you'll convert that to generalized anxiety disorder and talk about how it affects your social and occupational impairment to the doctor that's writing your nexus. This is not making sense to you. Check out my boot camp. Links in the description. I explain it all in my uh, video courses in my boot camp. So that's what I would do. I would increase the uh, anxiety. I would probably increase the headaches. And I would probably increase the GERD. That would turn this from a 90% rating into a 100% rating. So we have a 70% rating here for TBI, traumatic brain injury, with glare sensitivity insomnia adjustment disorder with depressed mood. So 70% rating is good, but this looks like they probably combined traumatic brain injury and mental health. You want your doctor to separate these things. 
because they basically took a 70% rating for a TBI and a 70% rating for mental health and combined them together. Thanks, VA. We don't want to do that. Go get your doctor. Challenge this. Supplemental claim. Get these things pulled apart. What's the glare sensitivity due to, right? Insomnia, adjustment disorder, depressed mood, like, you know, get that into something. Major depressive disorder, anxiety disorder. But, but more importantly, get the traumatic brain injury symptoms out of here and rated separately. And then we have migraines at 50%, migraine and tension headaches, claimed as head syndrome. They let us claim these as anything. It's best to like get diagnostic codes and call it the right thing. Um, but the duty to assist kicked in here, and he was able to talk about um, how bad his uh, work and social life was. So again, this whole sheet isn't bad. He's probably at 90%. Got some work to do. This is what I would do. Before I move on to the next one here, I just want to kind of reiterate this point about secondaries, getting paid. That's why we're filing this claim, right? The theme here is a 30% VA disability rating so we could at least get up to 30% or file claims that will add 30%. Working with VA math and the combined ratings table, but we'll leave that aside for a second. You're going to see things on here that you either have rated, they're not service connected, or whatever, they're bothering you. I'm not minimizing what your conditions are. I don't know what your conditions are. I'm sure they're miserable. I know what mine are, and they're miserable. I'm just pointing out how to get paid. This is about how to get paid, how to maximize your benefits. The VA claims process is a game and you have to learn how to play the game. I know how to play this game. I speak the language fluently. Once I figured it out, it was like ding, 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 light bulbs went off. It was like, oh, okay, cool. I need medical evidence. I need to focus on things that pay and everything that doesn't pay, it doesn't pay, right? Hearing loss, 0%. Huh, that sucks. They should pay, but they don't. Okay, cool. What does pay? I'll focus on those. So that's where I'm coming from with this. We got a couple zeros, not starting off too good out of the gate. Could still file secondaries on, onto these zeros if that's where you're at. 10% uh, for tinnitus. We got 20% for lumbosacral sprain. So he attempted to do secondaries, uh, right lower extremity, right and left leg radiculopathy but they're not service connected. You know why they're not service connected? Because there's no nexus here. There may be no diagnosis as well, but there's no nexus. So you need to have a nexus and a diagnosis. They're both equally important, or you're gonna go through the motions wondering like, oh, I got sprain and I've had shots in my back and I have radiculopathy and I've seen it in a medical record from 1947 or whenever it was, if you don't have a doctor call out the nexus and call out the diagnosis, it's going to end up not service connected. So what I would do is I would do, you know, keep this uh, back sprain at 20, lumbo, lower, right? And then do a supplemental and add on a right and left, lower extremities, radiculopathy. Here's another 20 and another 20. Brings it up to 60. Obstructive sleep apnea, 50%, not bad. GERD. Uh, that may or may not be fair. GERD is also, uh, it's called hiatal hernia. There actually isn't a rating for GERD in case you're looking for it. Gastroesophageal reflux disease. And then we have a rating for 30% for post-traumatic stress disorder. That is grossly inadequate in terms of VA disability pay. How do you have PTSD and your 30%? That means it bothers you sometimes. PTSD doesn't work like that. It's a life event where you feared for your life at least once, if not lots of times, depending on your situation. There's a stressor involved. It's not just kind of controlled by Motrin or whatever. So 30%, that needs to go up. That's what I would do on this claim. All right, this veteran has an overall rating using the combined ratings table of 70%. Let's see what the makeup is. Got a secondary, that's the arrow again, right? Got a secondary for a right lower radiculopathy for 10. So we have knee strain right and knee strain left, which means there's the bilateral factor. So add on two, three points for that. Uh, cervical strain at 10, ringing in the ears. This is a deferred one, you know, like this again, it's better to file the claim as tinnitus, not what it does, if that makes sense. 
So I don't think that's why I was deferred. I think that there is probably a problem with the nexus, and you could do that in your personal statement, by the way. Um, but again, deferred isn't good or bad, it's just deferred. Um, generalized anxiety disorder, claimed as anxiety condition, depression, insomnia, mental disorder, 50%. So this is what I'm saying when you have these things, depending on how you file the claim, there's one mental health rating. You could throw in as many diagnoses as you want, but you get one rating for mental health conditions. 50%, not bad, you know, that'll get you to that 30 mark, but this could probably go higher. Average mental health rating is 70% if we're being honest about our symptoms and how it affects our social and our work life. All right, this one starts off with a lot of not service connected. Nothing on migraines, skin, splenectomy, hearing loss, right angle injury, none of that stuff service connected, didn't prove it. No diagnosis, no nexus, not service connected. Save yourself the headache and waiting six months or even worse, going into the appeals process for seven years and then they still tell you to kick rocks because you still don't have a diagnosis and a nexus. File it right the first time and win. But we got some points on the board here. Tinnitus, 10%, not bad. Back condition, uh, not service-connected, erectile dysfunction, not service-connected. When it is, it's 0%. You get an extra 118 a month. Uh, that's good. Not in this case. Um, this guy didn't really prove too much stuff. But we got obstructive sleep apnea at 50%, and we got some uh, secondaries. Look at these secondaries. Diabetes, 10%. Urinary frequency, 20%. So those are two good secondaries. So we got 50, 10, and 20 right on one claim, right? And then if diabetes causes other things, you can file secondaries onto those. If urinary frequency causes more conditions, you can file secondaries onto those. You don't have to stick them all to sleep apnea. They're just there and they have a little arrow there, but you can file more secondaries, no limit secondary to the varicose vein. So I don't know if that's the best way to do it. Um, need a doctor. I mean, you could file, it has to be service connected. If I was looking at this, you could file your mental health secondary to your um, extremities, your diabetes, your urinary frequency, your sleep apnea, or your tinnitus. Actually, I kind of like this. I would file um, the secondary mental health like get a diagnosis of something, depression, major depressive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, file it and then file it as a secondary and make sure your doctor writes the nexus. No nexus, you end up with not service connected, just like this guy did. Here we have another one, insomnia disorder with other medical comorbidity, persistent. Uh, that's, you know, whatever. Got 70%, he yanked out a 70% rating for insomnia. That's high. It's uh, because of this other medical core morbidity. Obviously, we don't know what the diagnostic codes associated with that are, but still get some major depressive disorder. Make it easy. Remember, VA raters are doctors and they're not lawyers. So they're interpreting law according to their M21-1 adjudication manual. Make it easy for them. But this guy yanked out a 70% mental health rating. Perfect. That works. Um, left... Got left hip, 10%. Got some stuff I can't pronounce very good for 10%. Tonight is 10%. So overall ratings, 80. I would look at filing secondaries, that lumbar radiculopathy. Um, it, so if you have lumbar radiculopathy, you need to hook that onto something. The most common thing you would hook that onto is your back. So this isn't even on this list. I wouldn't even file a claim for my back at this point. I would focus on other things like migraines. I don't see GERD on here. I don't see IBS on here either. And a whole host of other secondaries. I would just take this 80% and write it and file secondaries. Or you meet the requirements for TDIU. If your service-connected disabilities prevent you from working, a 70% mental health rating does that, go the TDIU route. Call it a day. All right, here's the next one. Left knee 10. Feet disabilities not defined. What is that? Plantar fasciitis or, you know, broken toes. What is that? It's not very specific. Clearly not a diagnostic code. Um, so they didn't help you. You could help them help, you know, 
help them help you by being more specific and having a diagnosis, symptoms, and a nexus. Lumbosacral strain, 20%, not bad. Persistent depressive disorder at 70%. There we go, another 70% mental health rating. Perfect. The migraines at 30%, not bad. 30% ratings, what our theme is here. That might be at 50%, depending on how bad it affects your work life. Uh, tonight is 10. So this one's kind of funny. We have PTSD, which is not service-connected, and then irritable bowel syndrome, which is 30% service-connected. We're going for 30% ratings. So this is actually, this is why the VA websites are like, a clown show. Don't even look at them. Like legally, this doesn't exist. You cannot connect something to something that's not service connected. So this should not have an arrow underneath PTSD. It should just be filed as a direct service connection claim. But this is one of those things. Um, be careful what you wish for when you're going back at them. Um, because somebody's going to find this and either yank that 30% or whatever. Probably not good things. Uh, he, it's it's funny. There's a lot of there's sleep apnea, not service connected. Tried to file a secondary for sleep disturbances, penile condition, a sleep apnea again. You only need to claim it once. Hair loss, yeah. I mean that happened to me when I was 21. So uh, I don't even know if there's a rating for it, but. <laughs> It, I'm sure it doesn't pay much. Shave it and get on with your life or wear a toupee. And then right knee, 10%. So I wanted to give you a bunch of uh, things to look at here. A lot of these things are going to be disabilities that you're considering filing. You have ratings for. Uh, maybe you're thinking about filing presumptive for some of these things like the allergic rhinitis, um, sinusitis, some of these new PACT Act presumptives. Uh Maybe these are secondaries that you're trying to file a claim for. So you see the results. Not service connected means you didn't prove it. Zero and 10 means you did prove it, but these don't pay. So we want to focus on claims that pay at least 30%, right? And then we could get our dependents involved. And then if we're married and she or he is also a veteran, you get a double dip and claim each other. Check out my bootcamp at combatcraig.com if you want to learn more about this. Join me on one of my live sessions. And then if you need medical evidence, email my med team. Link's in the description and it's on screen. I'll see you in the next video. Happy hunting.